In this video, I'm going to show you how to make agar for mushroom cultivation. Learning how to make your own agar is crucial for mushroom cultivation. Agar allows you to test and start cultures. You can use agar to germinate spores from a spore syringe, spore swabs, or a spore print. You can test out and expand liquid culture as well as clone your favorite mushrooms. Without a doubt, learning how to make agar is one of the most important steps in mushroom cultivation. Here's what you'll need. Agar agar is a gelatinous substance derived from red seaweed. It is a common ingredient in food and cosmetics, but it also has important applications in mushroom cultivation. Agar is used to make agar plates, which are petri dishes filled with a sterile, nutrient-rich medium. Agar plates are used to isolate and grow mushroom cultures from spores or mycelial tissue. Light malt extract, or LME, is a nutrient-rich sugar syrup derived from malted barley. It serves as a primary energy source for the growth of mycelium, the vegetative part of the fungus. LME is a common ingredient in various mushroom cultivation media. You will need a stove or a heat source to boil the agar in the LME mixture. You will need a whisk for stirring the mixture, a pot with a lid to boil the agar in the LME in. You will need media bottles, 250 milliliter bottles are used in this video. You'll need aluminum foil, a scale for weighing ingredients, a measuring cup, food coloring, which is optional. You'll need sterile petri dishes. I got mine from North Spore. You'll need a still air box, a flow hood, or FFU to pour the agar in. And lastly, you'll need cling or food wrap, parafilm, or grafting tape. In this video, I'll be making 500 milliliters of agar. That makes about 20 to 30 plates depending on how thick you pour the plates. So you'll need 20 to 30 petri dishes if you're following along. This recipe requires eight and a half grams of LME. I get my LME from Amazon. This recipe requires 10 grams of agar agar powder and you will need 500 milliliters of water. The agar can also be found on Amazon. The food coloring is optional and serves no purpose other than changing the color of the agar. It's completely optional. On your stove with the pot on the burner, you wanna pour the 500 milliliters of water into the pot. Then add your 8.5 grams of LME and 10 grams of agar powder into the pot with the water. Stir it up with the whisk, making sure to mix it well. Allow the mixture to heat up but not boil over. Every minute or so you want to whisk it well to mix the ingredients while it's all heating up. Once it comes up to temp and starts to boil, keep an eye on it. If you heat it too long, it will boil over and make a mess. Once the foam starts to rise, lift the pot off the burner and whisk the mixture until it settles back down. Then put it back on the burner to heat it up again. Repeat this at least four or five times, boiling it until it foams up and removing it from the heat so it doesn't flow over. Mixing well. You're trying to dissolve the agar and LME into the water. If you see any chunks floating around, whisk until they are broken up. Once everything is dissolved, pour the contents of the pot into your measuring cup. With the measuring cup, pour half into one media bottle and half into the other. If you're adding food coloring, now is the time to add a few drops to your liking as far as color. If you use food coloring, you have to swirl the media bottles well in order to mix the dye up evenly in the agar. Once it's well mixed, you want to put a piece of aluminum foil over the top of the bottles. You don't want the bottles to seal because they could explode from the pressure building up. That's why we use aluminum foil. I believe media bottles are made for the purpose of sterilizing media. So they should be safe as is in the pressure cooker or autoclave. But I use the aluminum foil instead of the lid because when you pour it, it's a lot easier to remove the aluminum foil than the media bottle lid. If you have an instant pot, put water in a trivet in the instant pot. You want enough water to come up to the bottom of the jar. Put the lid on and pressure cook it for one hour. If you have a normal pressure cooker, you will need a trivet and water in the pressure cooker. Just like the instant pot, enough water to come up to the bottom of the bottles. Put the lid on the PC, bring it up to pressure and temp according to the directions for your pressure cooker. And if your PC is 15 PSI or higher, you can cook it for 45 minutes. Anything less than that, you would cook it for one hour. 
Once it's done cooking, we want to allow it to cool off. Pouring agar when it's too hot can create condensation in your petri dishes. We want to allow it to cool for 30 minutes to an hour. Once the Instant Pot or PC is safe to open, open it and check the bottles with your hands. Be careful not to spill them or burn yourself. When you can touch the bottles without it burning, they are ready to pour. Alternatively, you can get an infrared thermometer. They sell them on Amazon, so you can check the temperature without touching it. You want the temperature around 110 degrees, then it's ready to pour. Again, it's important not to pour it when it's too hot. However, you don't want to wait so long that it gets too cold. The agar will begin to solidify in the bottles if the temperature gets too low. When it's ready to pour, you want to place the bottles in your stiller box, in your flow hood, or your FFU. You want to get your petri dishes ready. I do stacks of 10 plate. When you're ready, grab a media bottle of agar and swirl it around gently. Don't spill it, but you want to keep the mixture mixed up. It will separate over time, so you want to constantly swirl it when you aren't pouring. You want to carefully grab the lid of the bottom plate and lift the whole stack except for the bottom of the petri dish. You want to quickly pour agar into the bottom dish. You want to pour enough to cover the bottom of the plate, as much as halfway up the plate. Mycelium grows 2D or flat, so you don't need it to be thick. I do just enough to cover the bottom of the plate so I get more plates. If you pour too much in each plate, you won't get as many plates. Once you pour the correct amount, place the stack down on top so the lid goes on the bottom petri dish. Lift the top lid and stack of the plates. Pour the agar so it covers the bottom of the plates and put the stack down. This whole time you need to be swirling the agar bottle in between pours. You're going to repeat this until you get through the whole stack. When you're finished, you may notice condensation in your dishes. This is normal. You're gonna leave the plates in the flow hood or FFU or SAB until the condensation disappears. This can take 30 to 60 minutes or longer for it to disappear depending on your environment. Sometimes it's stubborn and takes longer in humid climates, so you'll have to be patient. This is why it's important not to pour the agar when it's too hot. However, if everything's sterile inside the petri dish, the condensation isn't going to hurt anything. You can store the plates upside down if it makes you feel better once they solidify. Once they are poured and the condensation is gone, you want to let them sit until they solidify. This can take as long as an hour. You don't want to move them around too much while it's still liquid, as it could spill and make a mess. So again, do not move them around until you know they're solidified. You can check the top plate on one of the stacks by just barely lifting it up and seeing if the agar moves or if it's solid. If you have the sleeves the plates came in, you want to place the sleeve over the stack of agar plates. If you don't have sleeves, you'll have to wrap each plate individually with cling wrap, parafilm, or grafting tape. If you have the sleeves, once you cover the plates, you want to put the plates in a bag or container big enough to stand them up in. If this is your first time making agar, let the plates sit for 4 or 5 days before you use them, just to make sure there's no contamination. I usually wait about a week to use my plates, I've never had a problem. Plates are usually good for a month or two, as long as they don't dry out or get contaminated, they're good to use. One to two months is my normal use for plate. Now all you have to do is inoculate them and you're on your way. With that being said, that's the end of the video. So if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.